Um, has the message got through? How do we get the message through? Liz Hutchins from Friends of the Earth. It must be so frustrating for you, knowing how bad things are and how there are still people resisting this message for whatever reasons. How Cheer us up. <laughs> how bad are things? Well, I think that the NASA data really is alarming and we should be alarmed and that comes on the back of all sorts of observable um, changes to the planet. We can see um, the Amazon rainforest is getting drier. You mentioned the mm. Arctic ice. We're seeing um, permafrost in the tundra in the northern parts of the planet is melting, which is uh, releasing methane, which is a kind of a, a super climate changing gas. But what does that mean and, for us? What can we do? And so the planet is, is changing um, and um, it's having an impact on people around the world. So people <sighs> are being, um, uh, their livelihoods are being destroyed by extreme weather events, tornadoes, droughts, flooding and so on. Extinctions. Is, Extinctions, yes. Even in this country, we've seen a, a, a big increase in, in um, flooding incidents and people who are flooded out of their homes and, um, you know, they, they lose their jobs and aren't able to go back, um, you know, for, for years. So this is a really serious problem that's having a big impact on people now. But I would say that the, um, the world is starting to take climate change seriously. Um, just in December last year, nearly all of the world leaders got together for a big climate conference and said... Climate change is happening. We really need to take much more action. It's not too late. Well, they said that, w that we're going to try and keep global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees. And the really big challenge now, and it is a moral and ethical question, is, is, is the world now going to act together to keep these temperatures within safe limits? And is each country, is our country, going to do its fair share? And one of the issues that Friends of the Earth is concerned about is our government is yeah. not doing what it needs people, to do to tackle climate change. People are saying change. the latest rise are at 1.35, so we're nearly there. But we have to work in concert. It's, uh, we morally have to do it. It's, it's for our own interests in the future, for our children, for our grandchildren. Things are bad, Jonathan, aren't they? Things are very bad. And the frustrating thing is actually to transition our economy, uh, to create green jobs, to move into renewable energies in a big way, to become a world so leader no in fracking? renewable energies. It, no fracking? No, no. You've, got to, you've got to decide what you're going to... Fossil fuels? You've got to decide what you're going to invest in. No, financially, morally, ethically. You know, where are you going to put your energies? And we had a, a burgeoning uh, renewable energy industry that was really taking off, and the government just pulled the rug from underneath it. You had small businesses going out of business. Uh, you had a, a collapse of what could have been a, a world-leading market from the UK. So the frustrating thing is we could be uh, creating a very sustainable, strong economy. We could transition to more resilient local economies. So in times of economic turbulence, our local economies are much more resilient. How do we get rid of fossil fuels, though? Well, you have to create positive alternatives. You have to get rid of the need for them by investing in renewable energies. And there's you know, a wild, wild, very wide plethora of alternatives. Uh, it isn't just about you know, one or other. It's just about wind turbines. It's just about solar. It's about wave. It's about all sorts. And the technology is increasing all the time. And if we invest in that technology, we'll actually be able to become a world leader. Mm. Why are we not doing it as a country when we, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that's staring us in the face? Ah, oh, really? <laughs> a, hand, a hand goes up of uh, possible dissent. Uh, no, no, I mean, you're a climate change sceptic. Uh, so you're, you're with Donald Trump. Right, and, <laughs> no, look, and Ted Cruz. Let me finish. Donald Trump, you'll have you say, Donald uh, Trump want, could be with me, so what is the problem? And Ted Cruz, we, okay, Marco we Rubio. We speak what they're, is true. They're with the vast majority of scientists and the public. No, that isn't true either. The actual figures about the actual percentage of scientists that believe man is having a decisive influence is 7% tops. And if you go on their website, weatheraction.com, you can see the links to peer-reviewed papers that show that. And the BBC and others constantly put out propaganda to make people believe. Nonsense. No, do not shout rubbish. Let's just look at the actual facts. Everything that is happening in the world now has happened before. Climate change is natural. There is no evidence that CO2 is driving at this speed, climate change. At this rapidity. There's no evidence that CO2 drives climate change. What the million years of data shows is that world temperatures control CO2 levels. And what? what we have now is a lot of extreme events happening due to a very wild jet stream, which we predicted from solar activity 
years ago. And if we want to do anything about climate change, the natural climate change, what we should be doing is having more defence against extreme events. But we should not be wasting money reducing the amounts of CO2 because CO2 is driving nothing. I mean, that's just CO2, CO2 is good for plants, and the more oh, CO2, dear. the better. Now, that's I suggest you nonsense. look at the actual scientific evidence. Go on a website and many other websites and stop listening to oil companies, oil companies who back the climate change theory Liz. in order to justify Liz. increases in oil prices. Liz. That is a fact. Go there on are, their own okay. website. There are voices like... Piers Corbyn. Yes. Aren't and we can predict the weather and yeah. they can well, You're coming up against <laughs> a tidal wall uh, sometimes. You must, it must feel like it. A wave of dissent. I think what's like, oh. really important in, in these debates is that there's a balance um, that reflects the real scientific evidence. There are voices like Piers, and he's a, a very small minority. No, you in... go on, look on our website, read the facts. <laughs> Some look, of the points read the, the facts. facts. Let, let, let's, read but, the facts. Let, let's, facts is what counts in science. Let, not opinions from me or anybody. Let's, it's okay. the facts. There's seven percent. He said seven percent of scientists. I, I I read it was ninety-eight. That is Nine, untrue. Yeah, Nine, that is untrue. Liz. That is untrue. <laughs> and also irrelevant. I'll tell, tell you what. Truth is, evidence is what counts. Let's, let's, let's check out the evidence with, uh, with Jonathan and Liz. Please. Okay, so the Intercontinental Panel on Climate Change, uh, which is the world scientists coming no, together. No, it's not. They are government appointees. They are not scientists. Pierce. You are not helping <laughs> the cause by giving a platform to such ridiculous ah, views, Frank. Ah, oh, listen, oh, listen, seriously. Listen, <laughs> listen. It is, it is rough. Please. It's good. It's good. I think we've got to be very clear about this, Nikki, because this is, this is nonsense. It comes up time and time again. Okay. And in the interest of balance, the BBC says okay. we have to get I'll on. Okay, I challenge you. Yeah. It's just, it's I just challenge absolutely you. Nonsense. Piers, let, Piers, no, I, I, I want to hear from Jonathan. I want to hear from Jonathan. Could we please be quiet for a second? Yes. The thing is, it's important to address this and to, and to debate against these views and to show the public, because the 56% of the Tory MPs have, according to a poll I saw, have, have sympathy for this view. The general public, in your terms, if we can say this, do not realise the severity of this situation. Right. And there are views like this, and it's up to you and incumbent upon you, and very important that people like you, Jonathan, and people yeah. like you, Liz, come up and discuss it, and we hear the other yeah. side, and you put the, the science, other side, please. you the slam science. dunk them. And it's important that you do that. So, uh, I'm throwing you yeah. the basketball. <laughs> in, in a programme like this, you know, we can throw statistics back and forth, and he'll tell me to go to this or that website. The fact is, 99% of scientists are in, you know, one, Look, one camp. Now, he's going to just Piers, say, Piers, Please listen to well, Jonathan. We shouldn't say he's, gonna now, he's now going to dispute that, and we're not going to sort that out in this context. Right. I think we have to be clear. We've had this debate. This debate happened 10, 15 Is years it so ago. Over? It's gone. It's so over. Now, let's talk <laughs> about what we have to do. If you've got a meteor you know, that's going to hit your Earth in, in 20 years' time, you know it's going to collide. You know it's going to cause devastation. You pull out all the stops to address that situation. We've got a metaphorical meteor heading for, for Earth right now, and we need to be taking steps right now. My kids are going to grow up in a world that is heating, they are going to be devastated by it. You think the migrant crisis is a problem now, it's nothing compared to the amount of climate refugees we're going to be having swarming. Peter Owen Jones, you are a vicar, wow. you once worked in advertising, what a journey, but, but listen, <laughs> you, you know how to sell a message, how should this message be sold so that people realize the implications? <clears throat> well, I, I, I profoundly agree with, with Piers. Thank you very much. We need to look at the facts. The facts. And the facts are that since the Second World War over the last 50 or 60 years, we've seen a massive decline uh, in numbers of species living on this planet. We face an oncoming tidal wave of the sixth mass extinction event on this planet. Our relationship as human beings with the natural world is in absolute crisis. We say that we have a climate crisis. We say that we have an extinction crisis. The crisis is within us. And that's where we need to begin to look. The debate around climate is one of the issues uh, that we are, uh, we are facing, but it is emblematic of a crisis of conscience, a crisis of identity for each human being on the planet in terms of our relationship with the natural world. And we need to dream. We need to, we need to take back 
the future for our children and our grandchildren. And this is something that I do not hear the politicians, our elected politicians, speaking about. This is desperately important. Now we stand at a crossroads and we need to address this okay. urgently. Thanks. Rupert, in a minute. Oh, yeah. well, the deforestation, of course, the extinction of species, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty grim picture at yeah. the moment. But that's nothing to do with CO2. That's something that must be done anyway. Well, Edward Snowden, the other week, was saying that uh, the, the whole... The whole concept of uh, climate change was invented, never mind CO2, well, he was saying, by the CIA. Well, he it? was saying that, but I think that might have been a spoof. Well, well I don't well, know. Okay, no, just, no, just checking, no, just checking. No, uh, Rupert, 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 no. yeah, Rupert well, well, look, let, let's look at the facts, Rupert. The Arctic sea ice is at an all-time low. Uh, NASA said that, you know, biggest month, uh, month on month yeah. temperature since its records began. Yeah. This is, we were saying, well, the phrase last time was, we are all in this together. Really? We are all in this together. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? Well, I, th I think what we just heard was very, very interesting because it showed the religious origins of the belief in global warming as catastrophic, as a potential catastrophe. Because bear in mind that even despite the spike in, in February temperature, the, 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 the uh, climate models are overrunning the, the observed record. So the idea that we are on the course to some kind of Armageddon catastrophe is religious in origin, it's a religious belief fundamentally. I think where I think where the ethical I, if I may add, I think where the ethical dimension in this debate is incredibly important is for people to be honest about the policy consequences of what they advocate. So if we advocate green power, if we advocate renewables, the consequences are higher electricity bills. Higher electricity bills harm the worse off, they harm elderly people whose bills uh, whose income is uh, it's one of the top uh, what things they spend of okay. their household budgets is on electricity. I mean, listen, Jonathan, say, oh, jo Owen Jones. You say it's religious in origin. You're arguing with a scientific consensus. Like, no, 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 Look, seriously though, this is an opportunity. Now we, you mention it. Well, I won't put it past you here. <laughs> uh, there is a genuine opportunity here because the problem with climate change often is it just seems a bit abstract and technical to people. But actually we make it about everyday issues. Yeah. In Germany what they've done is they've seized the opportunity, they've created hundreds of thousands of renewable energy jobs, giving skilled, decent jobs, backed up with apprenticeships for young people. We've got a crisis of skilled jobs in this country, so let's use the climate change threat, instead of what this government's doing, which is attacking and undermining uh, the uh, burgeoning industries uh, which can deal with this issue, let's make it about jobs, let's insulate all homes and businesses in the country, and in doing so we'll take on fuel poverty, uh, and also help our economy well, and take on climate change. Liz, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's, like, it's like flat earth. It's like, uh, you know, evolutionary biology, biology and this, this issue, it's over. The debate is over in sensible circles. But you've got a big, big problem here to convince people because there are still those, like in all those other things, who are not going to look at the facts, who are not going to see the facts and acknowledge the facts for whatever reason. What do you do about it? Well, I think we need to basically ignore this very small minority voice and actually focus on what the majority of people are interested in, which is, you know, everybody in general wants to do their bit to protect the planet. They want to see a planet that is uh, going to be thriving and that our children and grandchildren can, can live on. And actually, the good thing is, it's, it is happening. Like, a lot of this good stuff is already happening. In China, even? In China, they have actually reduced their net carbon emissions by 1.5% oh. last year. So they have got to the point that we have not got to. Their approach is, to the natural world is another question. Well, but they, they've, are, started, they, you know. they've stopped um, building coal-powered mm. fire stations, and they're closing them down. They're the no, biggest no, investor in renewable energy in the entire world world but also we're seeing it in this country um you know there are so many things that we need to do to tackle climate change that are just good for us and our and our society anyway in london we now are getting to the point where there are as many people cycling as driving cars in central london you know that's really good for our health it's good for ending air pollution what is it that these people are afraid of you know what is it accidentally we might save the planet <laughs> I've always wanted to say this. Citizens of planet Earth, 
Let's hear from you. Uh, hands have been up. Uh, yes, good, you're kind of white shirt. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, I want to, to kind of comment on that and say, what, what is the, the accidental side effect? You know, are we accidentally going to stop uh, lung